credit costs. Um, not long ago, we lost a son to cancer. Yep. How old was he? Forty-three. Yep. And um, what form of cancer do you mind me asking? Um, in the groin or, or liver. It started in the groin and then it moved on into other areas. Right. So it was testicular, testicular cancer or no. prostate cancer, but no, just in the groin, in the muscle areas yes, of the groin. That area. Okay, in the lymph areas of the groin or? Um, yes, with a large lump. And which side of the body? Can you remember? I'm sorry I'm asking you all these things. I know you're still grieving. The right hand side. The right hand side. It's better than I do. Um, my question is to do with anger. Yep. Um, it took him about a year to, to die, but when I when we were aware that he, he was going to die, yep. um, I'd been we'd been praying to God and doing all those things. Yep. I got very very angry. And yep. Uh, I raged at God and I swore at him and I beat I did all those things that uh, I guess I was supposed to do. Um, he died and after he died there was no anger to God. Um, sort of a sense of peace. But yeah. There's a, a great sense of grief which is very, very hard to control. Yeah. And what I was wondering if it'd be easy to control that uh, crying, which is the main thing that we can't, we can't think of the boy without crying. Yeah. Whether addressing maybe anger I still have in me might improve that situation. Um, I, I feel you addressed a lot of the anger you had when, during the situation. The issue that you're facing now, I believe, is, is the grief. And if I can just make some notes about your grief, if you like. The issue with grief, particularly with losing children, um, um, when we're grieving, there's a number of truths that we're not yet facing at an emotional level, that we don't yet believe in our heart. And, and what we need to do is allow ourselves to actually work through releasing the error through our grief until, once we release the error through our grief, we'll eventually get to those truths. So if I could describe some of the truths, for example. For instance, one truth is your son is still alive. Another truth is that he's probably enjoying himself a bit more now that he's passed than he was when he was here on earth uh, riddled with the cancer. Another truth is that um, he has an eternal existence as do yourself. Now these are really basic, what I would call down the bottom here I'll write them as core divine truths. So these are truths. These are truths. The reason why we grieve is because we do not understand at the emotional level the truth. Now, the reason why we do that is because there are lots of other emotions in between getting to this place from and this place. And this place is actually the grief is the mechanism by which we can accept truth. Do you understand what I mean by that? It's through our grief that these core truths will eventually become a part of you. And when they become a part of you, you will, you will actually get to a point where you're no longer grieving and you'll know in your heart these truths to be true. And so you'll be able to think of your son with joy and happiness and not with grief. Right? So the grief is the tool by which you will eventually accept these truths. Now at the moment for yourself, you are trying to control the extent of the grief. The grief is actually, and this is going to be some, some of the things I might say now might sound a little cruel, but I'll be, I want to be straight with you about them. 
the grief is actually not about the loss of your son. The grief is about what losing your son means to you. Can you see there's a difference between the two? There's, in other words, you, losing your son has triggered inside of you grieving based emotions related to your own childhood in some way and things that you lost during this period of time of your growing up and into your adult life. And what this grief is doing is triggering those events and that's why as soon as you think of your son, what's the next thing you think of? There's, a, there's something you think of next. One thing I, I did mention, <coughs> I should, that towards the end I, uh, <coughs> I was just so threatened, threatened so uh, upset by the fact that it should have been me. I come from it. I have a history of both sides of my family dying of cancer. Yes. And I've got all the outward signs that I should have it, and he didn't. There's a very, very strong personal feeling of guilt in you that it should have been you. And in fact, that emotion covers over some very, very strong childhood events where you were blamed for lots of things in your life. And in fact, your grief is actually helping you access this guilt and then accessing, I won't write down what those emotions are because you will need to allow yourself to discover them in your childhood. But that's what's actually happening. And so your son's death has triggered in you all these terrible feelings of guilt that you have about it, about yourself and your life and how it should have been you who passed. And that's why the grieving is taking a while to work your way through. The key for you to do it is to allow yourself now to go into what you feel guilty about and talk to God now about those things. What, what is it that you feel guilty about? You feel guilty about living on earth. He's not here anymore. Feel guilty about it. He had a family, I gather, and you feel guilt about he had children too, I gather, and uh, you feel guilt about what's happened to the family, the children, There's, and if it happened to you, you feel that none of those things would have happened to them, and so there's a lot of feelings in there where you're taking on the blame, and that comes from a lot of things from your childhood, and one of those where, where you were blamed for that you need to allow yourself to actually work your way through. When you work your way through that, you will no longer have this terrible feeling of guilt when you think of your son's passing. And you'll actually then be able to grieve the actual loss of your son himself in the sense of your relationship, what you feel you've lost a relationship. And once you do that, you'll get to some core truths that actually your son's around you all the time and he's quite fine now. He's not physically ill. And, you know, he can see what's going on with his family. He can see what's going on with you, that he, that he loves you and cares about you. You'll start feeling all those truths inside of you. And so when you think of him, he'll often be present and you'll feel him present. And at some time in the future, you may even finish up talking to him um, after you've worked your way through those emotions. Does that make sense? At the moment, it's going to be very difficult for you even to hear him or talk with him because as soon as you even speak his name, this process happens inside of you. So allow yourself to actually go through the process into the emotion of it, and you'll get to the core of it, which will all be revolving around how much you were blamed and how much you took the blame as a result of being blamed in your childhood life and coming into your adult life. And does that feel, you can feel some of the things in amongst that. Um, and then you'll be, when you grieve, you actually, you actually, the grief will feel, you'll feel a sense of peace of it. And once you get to that stage, you'll also understand the truth at the heart level. So rather than it just being an idea that your son's alive, you will feel it in your heart. Rather than it just being an idea that you can communicate to him, whenever you want to talk to him, you'll just open your mouth and talk to him. Do you know what I mean? And you'll feel his reflection of emotion, if not anything else. And you may actually feel at some point 
other things come at him as well. You may even hear his voice at some point and know that everything's fine with him. <laughs> 